For the newly indoctrinated, Jim Butcher's The Dresden Files follows the story of a professional wizard in Chicago. We started our podcast as a way to help break down the series' most important moments, characters, and lore. This is McAnally's Dresden Files podcast by Free Flow Rambling. Conjure at it by your own risk. Welcome to McAnally's podcast, brought to you by Free Flow Rambling. This is episode number five. Are you really going to drink that? My name is Tanzan, and I am joined by my co-hosts, Maggie and Jess. Today we have on our show, Jay, a returning guest. Harry heads home. After not being able to sleep, he consults Bob the Skull on potion making and creates an escape potion. After some convincing, Harry creates a love potion as well to appease Bob. So we finally figure out who the aforementioned mister is. Yes. Yes. Mister is a very, very, very large cat. <laughs> very. A whole tail. lot of chunk. So. I was thinking about how large he is because he can knock Dresden off of his balance with his shoulder at Dresden's knees. And and, Dres- and, and Harry Dresden wobble. is 6'9". So, like, it, he's that tall? He's he that is, tall, yeah. yeah. So they, six foot nine, so his... His cat he, is... His cat's the size of a fucking Labrador Retriever. <laughs> well, yeah. eventually, you know, little puppy mouse will come in, and Mr.'s bigger than that puppy for our, a while. Well, my cat was bigger than my dog. When my dogs were 14 pounds, the cat was 27, so... <laughs> yeah. Well, they say that the that he's over 30 pounds of cat, and that he figured that... Yeah, he does say he's an enormous cat. I mean, enormous. There are dogs you, smaller. If he hits the back of your knee, you're going to move anyway. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter how big and strong you are. He's part wild are. cat. <laughs> well, that's what Dresden keeps yeah. assuming, yeah. that it's like a lynx or a bobcat or something, because he's very large. Paws. Maybe very Mancun. <laughs> <laughs> and furthermore, yeah. Mr. himself is just a sort to knock you off your feet, regardless of size and mass. <laughs> right. Yeah. Has an attitude about him. Well, we were going to talk about Bob, aren't we? Oh, we are going to talk about Bob. Bob. But yeah. Mr. makes we his meet, appearance We meet Mr. Friends, and yeah, he gets, he gets we, his we leftovers. Love Mr. And we, yeah. Do you think there's I, a reason that, that uh, Jim Butcher makes Harry uh, an animal fan? Well, you know, a cat is very much in the style of a wizard's familiar sort yeah. of thing. Which so I think that helps play magical. into the Yeah, and, and Butcher does do that once in a while, too. Mm-hmm sort of talks about cats staring at nothing or whatever and he's like yeah they're not staring at nothing i have a it's- roommate that does that too she's telling about how her cats are always staring at the ghosts in my house so. right that's yeah that's what they're doing that's it's exactly true. what they're doing yeah um so yeah so i think it's just easy and um i know butcher has had a dog at one point i don't remember he I does think he's have dogs a- and he does have cats he does have cats yeah so it could just be sort of a reflection of the yeah it just he himself pets wants are a dog aw- and cat, yeah, so pets are awesome. So they're 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 fabulous. So yeah, let's let's throw. And I think it does. I mean, I can also see it just sort of helping out Harry, sort of right. Like he's a lonely bachelor. T- <laughs> he's a lonely bachelor, but you know, big, tough, private eye, dealing with you know. Oh, I need my kitty. Just come and sit on my legs for a while and let me pet you. You know, like. <laughs> and but he doesn't have to deal uh, with ulterior motives either. What you have he, is a cat. 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 As exactly. a human might just like you know. Yeah, so, why are you here and what are you doing? Well, we sort of and get that Harry doesn't have a lot of other, um, is that what you're going to say? Well, if you're going to finish your sentence, finish it. C- companionship. You guys and, are always cutting me off. No, you just don't finish your sentences. <laughs> <laughs> there is that too. There's no tension here at all. I <laughs> does no, you cannot tell who's related in this room. <laughs> well, I guess you uh, want a cat when your, your closest human competitors happen to be Murphy, who's always wanting something from you, and the Morgan who's trying to take you out. Exactly, right? <laughs> so. Harry does not have a big social circle. He does not have a lot of outside companionship or... Oh, and it's another rescue, too. human touch. And it's and another it's, rescue. Harry mm-hmm. fished this cat out of the dumpster. Like, yeah, yeah. He didn't he go into was, a pet store saying, oh, lonely guy, you know? He saw oh. one more thing in need and yeah. bada bing, bada boom. He has got ha- a roommate. Harry was kind of new to town, and you know, he finds this kitten that's mm-hmm. in predicament so okay what the heck right yeah but yeah i think it again sort of fills gets, a little bit of get a somebody get somebody that doesn't talk back to you or if it does it doesn't know you have a cat and then, <laughs> you know what's his yeah. closest friends <sighs> well that happens to be uh McAnally, so yeah like, <laughs> the guy Mr. that gives yeah. me beer which explains why he might want to talk to bob apparently doesn't have lips but can talk yes so yes. harry's got this companion 
He is a spirit of air. He resides within a uh, rune-covered skull in the lab of Harry's basement, which is a sub-basement from his... Because Harry lives in the basement. Legitimate <laughs> basement apartment. Uh, and I kind of love so, it, too. You know. I love Harry's old boarding house with, like, his just little crappy basement and his little... But it's just... It's him. It's all I yeah. need. It's all I want. There's world going on above me and then yeah he's like i i, so I, I don't just have a basement i have a sub basement <laughs> so you peel back your rugs and you go down the ladder and you have this freezing cold tiny little lab that is the other the awesome thing i swear that's why wizard re- where why wizards wear rope it's just too damn cold in their labs yeah <laughs> yeah well, also being in chicago and here's something like really esoteric chicago has a bunch of tunnels and sub basements because that's where they used to chicago move the under chicago well and all the fires and rebuilding too there's like sections of city on top of city mm-hmm. true but, but they okay have, but they, they have, have they actual have, uh, coal tunnels coal sh- uh, coal system where they used oh. to take the coal from the lakers uh the the, the big boats and they used to run oh not the, the team oh huh? not not the team <laughs> No, that's in Las Vegas, or sorry, Los Angeles, and I don't understand that reference either. Why are there Lakers? Shout out, you can listen to You're on the ocean. I mean, there's no Lakers there. There, It's because they came from, can you believe I'm the one coming up with this? Um, They were somewhere else, like... Team got traded. Yeah, yeah, they were like, you know, the Saskatchewan Lakers, where there's like the land of a thousand lakes or whatever, and then they ended up getting moved, and I believe that is why they still have the name Lakers. Shout out. No. To horse, because I'm pretty sure this is where I know this information from. Yeah, I don't remember where the flames the, came the from. The podcast we horse. Atlanta. Flames oh. came from Atlanta. Atlanta flames, flames came from Atlanta, okay. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, so the LA Lakers were, I don't know if it was just somewhere else in California or whatever, but they did, they were, yeah. 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 It's an important name. I know absolutely none of this, sir. But I'm also sure. not why there's coal no, tunnels under Chicago. No, contribute your sports <laughs> team knowledge right now. Basically, Chicago didn't want uh, Right cool now. Uh, and it can't be Quidditch. Of, <laughs> Ping pong? A load of coal and what about it? I don't know. Oh. Which so, Chicago needed yep. no more of. <laughs> That's why most Chicago, uh, I think all Chicago's uh, buildings have to be built in brick to mm. avoid. Totally. Anyway, back to Bob. Back to well, Bob. I can input um, Chicago Masonry knowledge. Okay. <laughs> it's being a former Mason. Yep. They actually sell all of the f- Just like an actual brick mason, not brick like mason. Secret Society, yes, I believe. Not, <laughs> not, yeah, not quite as cool as that. That we know. <laughs> that, that we know. But I know about bricks. I, but they bricks actually and stone. They sell at a high high rate the, the burnt bricks from Chicago, and it's a Chicago-style brick. Mm. And it's highly sought after. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Anyone really, could burn really a city on fire. Right. Well, I will I will yeah. provide you more brick into this world. Like profiting off of somebody else's uh, trauma. Well, <laughs> well welcome Chicago to the bricks, world. Though, are, Did are you say the, the British the Union? And they're a certain <laughs> size. Just <laughs> like in Ontario, they have the Ontario brick. It is specific size <laughs> to Ontario. So you can't that? sell other bricks there. It's only Ontario brick. That's insane. So... This is our random knowledge. This is yes. we're free Very flow. Ra- this is where this yeah. all ties in eventually. But you'll have to get to episode four hundred and twenty-seven to really get it. We'll come full bricks, circle. Bricks. We will. <laughs> eventually, yeah. the building of a building will happen, <laughs> but not relevant today. But we're coming. We were talking about Bob. 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 Bob, 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 Bob. Bob the skull, who's not actually a skull. So he's Bob's the spirit, spirit. He's trapped in the skull, is he not? He, was he resides in the skull. He's he was demanding to be let out. And he cannot so. leave it. That's <laughs> <laughs> not residing. That's, that's being trapped. So part of the being about being a spirit of air is that you need to have a vessel, uh, a vessel in order to be safe from sort of like the ever coming sunrises that diminish magic. So he is in a rune covered skull that was prepared from a couple of hundred years ago. So it is a safe space for him to live comfortably without the magic being outside diminished. of like the never never and stuff like that because yes. magical beings can exist in the never never but when they come into the mortal world there's restrictions is, yeah and we haven't really touched on that but i don't we think will, that's so really we gonna will. be well we have yes. we have because two was from the never never and stuff like that mm-hmm. i'm like so yeah we haven't i was gonna say it's not really a spoiler because obviously there's a magical world that exists but yeah yes. so um so yeah so for bob to be in our world and be safe from things that might zap him here it's almost like being this a is his conscience here's this is it, it's exactly this is his lamb this is a genie in a bottle kind of but within that uh constraint also comes the fact that uh spirits of air do not have free reign they are legitimately meant to be assistance to wizards or whatever else should come across and have them yeah. and so uh they more or less bob is loyal to the one who possesses the skull 
and he cannot be given free reign without express permission from the person who possesses the skull. And possess is not so much a physical thing. You know, you can't just walk into Harry's house and pick it up and you're suddenly the new master, but... Uh, it, 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 yeah. Uh, see, I don't know. How much of this should we get into? Because a lot of this really isn't explained until later. Wait, wait, wait. I have a really important question. Yeah. I want to know why Bob's such a perv. <laughs> because else, because of Harry. <laughs> what else are you going to do? Okay. <laughs> so uh, my my take on it is honestly just because... Okay, so he is this, this Arab spirit. And as you get in this discussion, right... Where obviously Bob is interested and has been around for a while, and Harry's like, "What is the deal?" But Bob can't. Bob's not physical. Like he's he's a male persona. Okay, he likes boobs and stuff like that. But I think it's because he has no ability to experience. He's not human, so he can't experience human love and affection, kind of a thing. He doesn't have a physical body, so he cannot physically experience what it is to have sex and stuff like that. I think that you know, again, is his academia going? But that's it. Is is it's all sort of. Um, very ethereal to Bob. Like he can't write. So yeah, for him, it's I think this really big, like, 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 what is this? Why is it? What do you do? Even if you said the intent, the intention, or the the emotional uh, intent, because he's a spirit and you can feel the the crackling in the air. Well, exactly. Just like Mum brought up, like last episode about Toot Toot being all like, you know, giggling after you know necking teenagers. There's just a little bit extra flavor of just like, ooh, 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 like yeah, it's just we can't titillating sort of yeah. Right. We don't participate in this. This isn't really part of oh, our. They don't find like, them under cabbage patch leaves. No, no, they don't. <laughs> right. And I mean, even like maybe not to that extent, right? But even when we watch things, like we look at certain animals or creatures, we're like, that's that's all they have set. Like what? Like <laughs> pythons or something like that. I forget if it's. I'm, an apology to anybody if I'm getting this no, wrong. No, no, give for, us the animal sex but lesson. <laughs> the the py, pythons or whatever. Your best so David Attenborough they, voice. Oh, God, I wish. I can't. <laughs> that man's like 93, 94 now. Mm-hmm. Look at him go. No, I don't. Not last I checked, but that was a couple days ago. So yeah. <laughs> sorry, David. Um, okay, no, but pythons, they have like this python ball. So basically, however many, I don't know if it's like two or three or like 10 of them, but the, the boys will basically swarm the girl and basically just have this giant bu- and whoever gets in there first they have an orgy they basically have an orgy I've to heard see that who's too. and 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 then and as soon as he gets in there he like seals it with wax so no one else can get in there too so it's literally like pin the tail on the whoever gets right so they're all and it's just this big writhing swarming ball of snake and it's no, literally I are so angry all the and time and it's like literally whoever finds the hole first and gets in there and then plugs it up so nobody else can sneak in there and it's just right this so, is a safe for work podcast this is a safe for work podcast <laughs> right so here we just spent 10 right so you can only imagine like right we're like this is so weird this is so strange and we will watch it on television and we will discuss it and we will read about it and we will right so i mean i think there's a certain amount of that and stuff happening too so we'll agree there's a point to that there is also the added aspect of the fact that the spirit takes after their host and to a point you know harry has to take some of the responsibility you know bob is snarky and pig-headed and uh, And a horny teenager and a a horny teenager because you know that's who harry was and is (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah and we don't know exactly how long at this point but yeah we do know that he's had bob for a little while or whatever right and like we say yeah harry is sort of a young adult himself so there definitely, I think, is is a certain amount of that where we've sort of touched on a little bit of, like, the male gaze and the things like that in, in too, right? Like, true enough, every time Harry described, I mean, even just now, he asked him about Susan, right? Dark eyes, dark hair, great legs, like, you know, like, it's, it's right, Harry notices women and does describe them and... You know, so yeah, it's not... He's also supposed to be a private investigator, so wouldn't you actually take out of the uh, attributes or the uh, details of life? <laughs> That that is one Loop way. To, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was a professional, uh, a professional due diligence. Interest, yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Just an academic interest. Just a professional yeah, exactly. Interest, just yeah. Like, Maybe yeah, what? which is yeah, which is what he accuses Bob. Right, and Bob's like yeah. my academia doesn't just be, but yeah. And on top of all of that, you know, it's also established that Bob has been around for a couple of hundred years. Someone's gonna get bored eventually. Yes, <laughs> seducing shepherdesses way back when. So, yeah. so you know the uh, 
Yeah. And Sorority I, houses of today are quite a step up. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, I think or maybe the more things change, the more they stay the same. I don't know. Uh, actually, that probably be the, might be kind of a closer uh, thing is like analysis of, <laughs> oh, has anything changed? <laughs> Other than the technology and the... Academic uh, interest, yes. Yes. Academic interest. yes. And we also have no idea if Bob ever cared about this sort of thing before he was with Harry as well. We don't know. He well, except could've. he does say he was seducing separatists way oh, before, sorry, yes. so I'm okay. going to assume okay, that okay. Bob has always had So some maybe Bob sort has always been a little bit salacious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, but how did Bob come to be? I mean, that could be part of it, too. Like, who brought him into this reality? That you is a learned whole that other in other about point. 15 or so books. <laughs> maybe. Oh. Maybe not. Well, no, I, just, yeah, no spoilers. Uh, the creation of a spirit in and of itself will come up later. Jim Butcher himself has put out into the world, Oh, I thought Bob's parentage was obvious. But that's all he said on the matter. So, yeah. Oh, so that rotten bastard. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if he has parentage, I mean, that could be part of it too, right? Well, I don't However, know if it's too much spoilers to say how. Yeah, I won't. I won't yeah, say how to make we're one. Yeah, yeah. that'll come up later. A place that you know the the fairy is just watching a bunch of people having a good old time going at it. It seems like, you know shit and semen make the world go round around here. Well, so. I mean, really, you know. Well, there is a certain amount of yeah. Look, if the stork comes, the stork comes. <laughs> Dad, you're back nope. in the cabbage nope. patch. <laughs> <laughs> Dad's sitting on the roof with a shotgun. Why well, the stork might show up? I went. <laughs> <laughs> if you shoot it down Riddle. before it's on the property line, you don't have to sign for anything. <laughs> right. Not mine. Uh, um, so, anyways, so uh, this is Bob. This is Harry. Uh, and, and it just kind of makes for a fun character. <laughs> he is a fun <laughs> character too. Know, being like, you know, there, there he is. This is his own little magic encyclopedia. Like, how do you make this? How do you make that? Bob is the you, memory. You're gonna have to make a love potion first. Oh. Bob is Harry's internet because Harry can't use the internet. Exactly. It's Bob's job to know everything. Bob's he does not job. forget. Oops, sorry. Wrong shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's almost a little bit like the comic relief, isn't he? Well, he, he plays well, an element of that. Like a lot of his. Not to say that Harry's not funny, but Bob is very. In this particular chapter, he is the comic relief of all this intense catch 22. Haha, catch 22. Oh, shitstorm, shitstorm, shitstorm. And well, Bob is also separated from the emotional part of it because, you know, yeah. <laughs> Morals, who cares that you're going to get killed today? Yeah. Who cares that you're scared? That has nothing to do with me. Right. Here, let me crack yeah. some jokes. You He's know? like, I don't worry about yeah. that. That's mortal shit, exactly. good and bad. I just, so, I just know how to do it. Here's something I had a question for some a skull or spirit or whatever the case is that has such a uh, lexicon and uh, encyclopedia of potions and spells and what have you and whatnot. Well, if you want to know how your hearts of two people blew out of their chest, wouldn't you ask him? You would think you might. Yeah, because I don't think he actually asked Bob. Uh, he does not, but uh, Harry also sort of knows it's, it took black magic, it took a ritual, it took help. So I don't know that he really expects that Bob can offer him any other information than he already... And he hasn't no. really started to do the research on it yet. No. He's trying to avoid that right now. Yeah. So, but you could also mention it to Bob, and Bob might have because well, Bob sometimes gives. Well, you know, sorry, here's a spoiler, but sometimes Bob gives him the information he wasn't even looking for, just based on the conversation. Which he, is true, but Harry does give him a rundown of the day. Yeah. Hmm. So Bob it's is kind aware of funny because but, Mara's telling you this other uh, series I was reading by <laughs> Glenn Cook. Well, he, the protagonist who is a PA. P.I. also has a work partner who happens to be dead but alive. So mm. it's kind of interesting how they all play on this. Now, it's not a skull. It's not anything Yeah, else, yeah, but, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. The same thing. Comes in, gives him a rundown of the day, and then all of a sudden this little gem drops out of nowhere. And it's like, oh. Maybe that's where I should go look. Well, and that's definitely, I think, part of the, the purpose of Bob. It, I mean, I think in a lot of ways it is, because Butcher made him um, technologically... Impaired? I impaired, <laughs> in incapable, incompatible. Um, that exactly, Harry can't just, you know, pop onto the internet and look stuff up and get things that way. So he sort of did need some sort of reference that without Harry literally owning every book in the world... And knowing where to look it up, somewhere to go for that, right? So Bob, again, is mostly that, but Bob doesn't quite know 
anything and everything as well, right? Like, Bob still has to learn certain things, and if there's certain things that he just has not yet come across in life, he's not an expert on them, right? So there is that, too, that while he has, you know, a couple centuries of knowledge and experience, um, he's not always going to It's not automatic. It's not automatic. He's not always going to have every immediate answer that Harry needs for everything, right? So, um, um... He's like sure. that encyclopedia. Yeah, he's yeah. he's without being a collection of books. Without yeah, yeah. which makes I it think easier. It's kind of interesting that uh, Harry is that. Um, I'm gonna say screw up electricity. Yeah, I think it's kind of a neat thing because electricity at one time was considered being a flow of demons. So as opposed <laughs> to being an electron drift, so it's kind of interesting that you know maybe Harry himself might be a little bit. I say everyone has their Demonic. spirit and stuff like that, so maybe he's a little bit more of an air spirit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's what I like. That's what I like in Butcher's World is that he he takes a lot of the the original lore and fantasy and stuff that we're used to, but he has sort of a good way of giving his own little bit of spin on it and making it a little bit different too. Especially the interpretation. Especially in this day and age with a flood of, of vampires and werewolves and things like that, you know, it's like you can still add something a little bit different or, you know, and I like that he takes sort of some of this little bit that there are a little bit of extra um, hidden gems and lores and things that, you know what I mean? Like, for all you know, in the background, it is exactly, but you knew the same thing. That it's like, well, electricity used to be like demons. So we're just going to, you know, it's well, like, right. It's kind of a, um, well, I used to study history. So it was kind of one of those things. Yeah. First off, they thought it was demonology because they didn't understand what electricity was. People just try to say, oh, it's a lightning in a bottle. <laughs> but... It doesn't actually work that way. And no. the only time that you really have to worry about the demons of electricity is if you didn't throw the breaker and you start, you know, screwing around with the electrical panel. Yeah. You're probably going to meet God very quickly. Which I have watched <laughs> so people do on small it's, levels. Well, I just think it's kind of interesting, you know, uh, like, uh, you know, having to have mechanical everything because you're about to screw something up if it you know, has electrical. Yeah. And it does. And we do. And I mean, I don't know if that's specifically the reason he chose this or whatever, but I mean, you do get tastes of it later on in books and they come back into and explain and harry does sort of offer a little bit more reasoning for it later on and My stuff like that but life everything's gears and cars <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly right but um but yeah i just i love that the, you're never quite sure where those sort of little extra tidbits and where that little sort of extra yeah. nuance or something might come but from I, when i understand that. Well, i appreciate the uh, the bob in, um, thing being the, the encyclopedia that you didn't have to thumb through right yeah. so. it, it really was kind of a good brilliant way of of giving Harry like you say that that knowledge and that resource since you're like well I took away a whole bunch of avenues for him so how do we and exactly without Harry having to like, yeah. he can just have this freaking one tiny room <laughs> apartment right and still have access to all this without having to secretly live in the library of congress or something like that <laughs> and that he then has to actually know what reference books he's got where they are which where right bob can just be like oh this is this this is this this is this you know and then he can be like oh cited in this book right it just yeah it's it makes that so much easier that harry can get that information without he's got us going Siri with attitude really Siri with attitude. Or, <laughs> streamlines uh, the experience or perhaps, exactly or perhaps a mentor without having a mentor and a, a little bit to a point harry's the master but harry's the master not yeah. really the, yeah he you know still has a personality to talk to mm -hmm. and and, uh, you know, a sounding board. Well, at that point. Yes. He's got questionable morals just because of... We've got no got morals. morals. Yeah. <laughs> this, 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 this. Bob <laughs> makes it very clear. Bob's yeah. like, I do not follow morality. Entirely. It's a human concept. Yes. <laughs> I have no interest and no concept so of it. Why? Vague. He has a vague concept of it from being right. around humans. But well, yes. the why doesn't really ever matter. The why doesn't really ever matter. Yeah. yeah. And oh my God. Oh Lord, what is it? I I want to say it's book seven. I think possibly has one of my absolute favorite quotes from Bob ever. It is such an amazing thing, and it's too bad I can't share here right now. Because we'll get there. Jay would probably really appreciate it, but it is one of the most brilliant things I've ever heard him say. Okay, anyways, yeah. Um, so basically, again, as we've just been talking about, Bob is a sounding board. He is this encyclopedia. He is able to recall anything he has already learned and be aware of at the drop of a hat. Uh, so which leads into, you know, part of what makes Bob so useful for Harry is when it comes to magical, uh, his, his ex experiment, uh, experimentation. Yeah. I mean, experimentation, it, experimentations, potion making, uh, 
capabilities. Uh, Expanding, learning new magic. I mean, none of these them. are the words I mean to use, but they all work. Yeah. I don't know. Magical creation, uh, whatever. Okay, so, uh, so it basically it all comes down to, you know, Harry's got this soundboard, he's got this uh, encyclopedia, and it really helps when he has to do something like make a potion. Uh, which is a very fun gimmick in the Dresden universe. Yeah, he's it's basically like he's got a cookbook right there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Bob uh-huh. the cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and one of Bob's uses is that you know, like you said, like the Half Blood <laughs> Prince. It's uh, yeah, it's like like uh, yeah, Harry's read the Half Blood Prince uh, version of this of the spells and potions that yeah, he's he knows when to use sort of substitutions or like this will work better, you know, like yeah, you don't want to cut up this root, you want a drop of that. And Bob's exactly. Your uncle. What? exactly. What? Yeah. So and Bob, you know, he's very got he's got the insight on how to you know if you don't have the uh, incorrect correct ingredient you know store bought is fine here's S- how substitution you out and <laughs> yeah here's how you do this because you know of course yeah. you're not going to have all this laying around who does oh but yeah, can you'll talk about research. some of these ingredients that he's got for these these potions like the escape potion itself is just kind of nasty. delicious so, so <laughs> each potion needs eight ingredients in order to work you need the five senses you need soul body body and mind that's eight, right? Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> Five and three. So you've got yeah. <laughs> eight ounces of jolt cola. That is fun. A drop of motor oil for the smell. A cut up bird feather for the tactile. Three ounces of chocolate covered espresso beans ground up. A shredded bus ticket because that's going to be fun to drink. But it gets you places. A small chain <laughs> for the heart. Shredded. That would exactly. <laughs> I think like, you hit it right on the head. Here's your here's your pass because that's what you use otherwise. Is a bus ticket to get you point to point. Right. <laughs> a, a flickering shadow. And the sound of mouse scampering. These are the other thing I love. Butcher some of his mind and 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 spirit kind of elements get fun and get interesting. Yeah, so, so you're like you right. Get a so mouse scampering to get into a bowl. I mean, bottle pretty it. Pretty sure yeah, you got to be a yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah bottled mouse scampering. Oh my yep. god! <laughs> I've, I've seen bottled mouse something or other. But <laughs> <laughs> not usually the scampers you get. Yeah. yeah. I forget um, which cartoon that the guy that bottles his farts. <laughs> Fuck we do that. I don't know. I'm either. pretty I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of them. No, you're not gonna I, hear it, but man, you're gonna tell. Uh, uh, I'm sure it's in a that's, lot that's of little boy joke cartoons. At work, a thermos full of fart. Is some guy that's finished his drink and you kind of cap yours, and put put it there, because apparently you open that up and it's an eye opener. Oi ve. <sighs> I, we, 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 we can edit this part, right? <laughs> <laughs> I would just like to yeah, say... Yeah, I went there, my bad. Half of this quartet does not condone. <laughs> Let's go back to the sorority house. <laughs> For those of you that are wondering, I actually do work at a construction. <laughs> oh, I work so. at construction sites. I still, thankfully... Yeah. Was not subjected to that nor <laughs> participated in, but that's quite oh, all right. So back to the potions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how do you drink this? Like a chain, a chain, a shredded bus ticket. Right. So once it's all mm-hmm. in the magical mixing pot, you know, I, I imagine it becomes, you know, this sludge are, of magical are proportion. You can tell me you've never lost a necklace in like a bottle of cola and you had to drink the whole thing before you could finally upend it and dig your necklace <laughs> nobody out? Nobody has done Actually, that. I understand your point, but nobody has done that. No, are, if you drop a necklace in a bottle sure? of cola, like putting stuff in a gel cola, that gel cola will dissolve that. That's true. Well, you'd have to leave it in there a while. How long does it take you to drink a joke cola? I mean, okay, maybe the kind of jewelry I can afford. (laughs) Or does it stay in the bottom of the pot and then he just ladles portion of it out because it was in there? Well, he pours it into a sports bottle. He doesn't really explain how. He just says he pours mm-hmm. it into a sports bottle. So, so he doesn't Instead actually... After f- cooking it for so You are breaking hours. down his cool potion. <laughs> <laughs> to his parents' essential. You're ruining, ruining the drama. <laughs> I think it makes more of a difference. Harry. You put that in your mouth. Okay. Um, yuck. This isn't about hygiene. This isn't about <laughs> tasting good. This is about the working. imagery. Yeah. So again, all of the ingredients yeah. are meant for escape. You know, you've got all these things okay. that are associated okay. with. And he does. So he does. He does see a small chain, which he broke and then dropped. So we don't know that he put. He could have just broken a couple links in there. Right. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Could just been a small portion of the chain. Like, it's true. If it's small enough, stomach acid will get it eventually. Well, yeah, and it's not gonna right. You you swallow a piece of chain as long. He's also magically yeah. brewing, though, so he's adding his own magic to it. So we'll yeah, so dissolve. so on top of the uh, the five ingredients, Physical. and then the other three for the mind, body, and spirit, he's also imbuing it with 
his emotions, his his will. Will. Well, then uh, at that point, if you want to take the, uh, what do they call it? Um, Easy way out. No, um, absence of disbelief is what the term. Suspension term of disbelief. Suspension. Yeah. Yeah. suspension of disbelief. Then, I guess. Being a magician, you can actually render this into something palatable. Yeah. Although he does say that it is not palatable and it smells no, disgusting it doesn't, it and knows, it tastes yeah. even worse. But he's not going to die from drinking a piece of chain. It's, it's consumable, it's if not pleasant. Yeah. I guess the love potion sounds at least a yeah. little bit more palatable. You know? Ish. Yeah, and see, this is where <laughs> I Tequila have... and dark chocolate. Ah, oh, you got me there, I guess. <laughs> Could be worse. Drop a perfume, though. <laughs> Maybe masked by everything else, but... I mean, as yeah. long as it's like a shot, you know? Oh, come on. Like, we haven't all been sprayed in the face of the perfume counter. All right. We've oh, definitely all know. ingested drops of yeah. perfume at some point. I don't care. Okay, maybe not. But fine. If you never lost a necklace and a beverage, then you can at least say yeah. you're... You've you, walked you, past that old lady you, that sprayed too much. You sprayed some aerosol in your <laughs> mouth. you and... in an elevator with that old lady. <laughs> right. <laughs> the bus. I just said the perfume you can taste because it's that close. Because yeah. it's... Yeah. Okay, so this is my problem with this. Because Harry's like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I'm not making a love potion. Like, that's not not kosher. And Bob's like, come on, come on, come on, come on. And Harry's finally like, well, they are about the cheapest thing in the world to make. Boom. What does Bob start off with? Let's grind up some diamonds. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know about Chicago, but diamonds here are not so cheap. (laughs) That just might speak to his inexperience, though. Well, maybe. I And I don't know. But so the next thing, Bob's like, yeah, yeah, I figured you're cheap. He's like, okay, tear up a $50 bill. Granted, this is cheaper than your diamonds. It's probably his last fifty dollar bill. But it's well, it, yeah, he does. But this is the, I'm like still I'm like you're throwing fifty bucks in a potion that you're you know I'm like and just for fun I, I I yeah. I, ju- I just to get the yeah just so you can get the escape potion that you want right. But I'm just and like, in Bob's defense, I mean diamonds are neither rare nor valuable. We ourselves have just put a price tag on them. So in Bob's defense, I mean okay, fine. Well, I'm Bob just, I just Bob doesn't, does but there. but I just exactly. yeah. But I mean I just think it's funny that Harry's like oh love potions are about the cheapest thing and then bob's like okay well i mean yeah bob didn't say they were cheap <laughs> harry's the one that right so i get yeah. for sure for bob and then that's the other thing he's like tequila and champagne right and, and dresden's like well, aren't you supposed to use champagne and he's like well, what's the difference he's like well it's cheaper i'm thinking you'll get sleazier result well harry you just said it was cheap so wouldn't you are you expecting that there's going to be tequila and so if you're expecting that this thing is going to be made with with money like high valued money or diamonds or champagne where the fuck do you so this is just to me one of those things where i'm like well and it speaks a little bit to i think it was to bob's idea of what love what love is versus <laughs> what so the, is so the end be. justify the means He's yeah like, again like bob has thing. he has yes. no concept right it's because like the idea is that's mm-hmm. yeah and that's all right bob's like you get the same results it's all <laughs> what does it matter how you get there it's yeah fine. yeah exactly yes. But yeah, it's just one of those things where I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah. I couldn't you know. help but underline this quote after he. they do all of these um, potions. You won't regret this, Harry. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> Lies. Uh, very much you so. You won't regret that. That's, that's superb. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So much. it is also, I think maybe uh, if you want to make another point against Jim Butcher, is that if Harry's so resistant to this love potion, then is it going to come out the way that he wants it to? If his That's will true. is not focused on, yeah, you can't do magic making, you don't believe he, in. Is he making it for himself or is he making it for someone else? I think that would make it. Well, difference. either way, right? Because either way, he has to believe in it. And so either A, he's putting up a front for Bob and does want it, or... And he does briefly consider... Susan. He does because he's like, oh yeah. He's like, oh, if she wants, wants a demonstration of magic. Ha ha. Uh, no, oh, no, 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 no. I can't <laughs> do that. Another, I can't do that. Yeah. In there yeah. I know. And this is, the, I mean, obviously it sets it up for whatever, you know, there's going to be. But I mean, yeah, it is one of those things too. It's like, well, yeah, you could have made it and you could have dumped it or put it aside or, uh, you know what I mean? Just because Bob made you make it. Properly. Or, you know, right? Like, Certainly, yeah. I mean, humoring Bob is one thing, but carrying it on your person and waiting to use it is an entirely other one. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then Where I think... Where are you? I'm at the bus station. Did I see <laughs> <laughs> you know, a shot of this in your yeah. yeah I'm now. doing a lemonade stand today. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What's up? <laughs> so that's just one more aspect about... um 
even the potion making itself is that it gives a little bit of insight too that you know none of this was something Harry had to run out and get. This is all things that he has just laying around waiting yes. for the fact that he is yes. going. To Although eventually. he only had the money because money can well, keep him that Okay, fair otherwise enough, he could be like, "Sorry, Bob, we're screwed." He had Although, you know drops of motor oil and bird feathers and shredded bus tickets and yeah. perfume and, and lace he, and ashes of a passionate love letter. He had things already. Oh, waiting he, in his no, office. he didn't have. He was oh, fresh no. out of those. Ugh, how did I know? Ugh. Check the shelf. So yeah, Bob offers up a couple of his romance okay. novels. Okay. Start with the start. What was it page one seventy two? Start with the paragraph that says her milky white breasts. <laughs> <laughs> not that I've read this book before. <laughs> <laughs> she does not have the book open in front of her. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm checking right now though. I'm sure oh, you're right. Great, that's just right. Da, 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 da. She just had the ashes of a passionate love letter. I blinked at the skull. Uh, Bob, I'm fresh out of those. Oh, Bob snorted. How did I guess? Look on the shelf behind me. I did and found a pair of romance novels. Their covers filled with impossibly delightful flesh. Hey, where did you get these? I'll ask you about, Bob answered, answered blithely. Page one, oh, I said 172. Mm. Page 174, the paragraph that starts with her Bob. milky white breasts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's no yeah, point you I'm being here if you're going to get the facts so wrong. I, yeah, no, I know. I screwed that big time. <laughs> Somebody did anyway. It's like, Snape, <laughs> it's like Snape asking people to turn to page 196, okay? Just Open sh- your notebooks, <laughs> too. Tada, Ben. Yeah. On the magic cooking so, for one. So yes, so, so he did. Yes. yes, Harry has an extensive collection of garbage in his lab, waiting for the day that it is useful to potion making. Yes, and well, and go ahead. Okay, because I was going to say he does describe um, when he comes down. He's like the lights came up and revealed a long table in the center of the room. Other tables against three of the walls around it, in a clear space at one end, the brass circle. Shelves over the tables were crowded with empty cages, boxes, Tupperware jars, cans, containers of all descriptions. Um, and so yeah, so he's he's he does exactly like obviously he knows he uses this stuff for and well things like mouse scampers and and stuff are very definitely more specialized items. Um, yeah, it's not terribly surprising in some ways either that, yeah, he might have a bit of motor. I mean, let's face it, the beetle probably goes through a lot of motor oil too. Right. <laughs> that, that just could be his standard, his standard, Maybe um, the blue beetle reserves. The yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 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 See, I, see, the chain I always assumed was like, like a chain, like a necklace. I suppose it could have been like some motor chain or something, right. you know, so like. For the heart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man, my timing belt blew again. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, sorry. You were you were, were you gonna? Oh, yeah, I was gonna say that like the the function of this chapter beyond uh, character development for Bob seems to be um, developing the setting of of, of his home. Yeah, because they do. Uh, he does an extraordinary them. amount of inter- indeed detailed descriptions of his apartment. As oh yes, well the as first time is the first time we've. I mean, yeah. he popped in briefly and went out, but this is the first time. Yeah, we're coming home to his apartment. It's the first time we've gone down to the lab. So yeah, we're getting sort of the full description and, and exactly the heavy tapestry. Yeah, lots of because yeah, he's got this cold, dark, dank little little basement suite so like other people we know lots of lots of carpets down on the floor <laughs> and layering and stuff so he likes the, ta- uh, the 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 tactile stuff the tactile mm-hmm. and the texture and, and the warmth i mean like i say with this technology and you know he can't he can't use the and this is something i've always wondered about ever so slightly just given the fact that he is in this boarding house i'm like how separated out are because in my limited experience of these kinds of things you know in typical basement suites and i don't know about 100 year old boarding houses but you kind of have, you know, like the one furnace for like, there's not, you know, like the electricity is not like, it's just a little bit interesting how some of it can be separated out and some of it not. So, I mean, again, where do they keep, again, most places it's like your, your furnace and your water heater are like down in the basement. But does that mean it's in the basement apartment? Cause he's saying he had his own fireplace. He, he does his own, have his, he own. his own fireplace. Then it was designed to be a boarding room. As opposed to a mechanical room, what they probably well, yes, it it, it is the but you know, but I mean, like exactly how has this evolved, right? Like, um, um, I mean, I've been in like warehouse spaces and things where they mount the friggin' water heaters like up on the ceiling, so they're not taking up floor plates, right? Like, do do you have sort of little individual for the different apartments? Is it just somewhere? Like well, else I mean, down in the basement, the but separate from his one, compartment. Like how cl- I know, but just he, yeah, he, maybe there's a back door. He in won't back keep room. any of that stuff in his apartment for sake of it blowing. But I'm like, you're living in fairly close. Like the people directly above you presumably have hot water and electricity. 
<laughs> so how do you prevent blowing out or there? Or he has constantly rotating neighbors above him because they can't keep <laughs> electricity <laughs> yeah. running. The thing yeah. is, though, is like he, he's complaining about his apartment as opposed to the entire house because they have different circuits. Well, you know, I'm just I'm so, just saying my uh, if he doesn't if he doesn't have like like right here we're kind of you know we're downstairs in uh, my roommate's area that has a breaker box nearby. Mm-hmm. Uh but that breaker box you know runs different parts of the house. Yeah. So th- you can flip a switch here and that one room is down but the rest of the house goes on. Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe along the lines of Probably his landlord's had enough of uh, changing the breakers of the fuses and stuff like that and just leaves his off. No, granted, I guarantee, but like you say, yeah. this he panel still that's that- right here controls, I mean, that's how, so the point is, is that how is this house, is it just one of those convenient, th- this is more just personal curiosity, yes. it's not a flaw I find with the book, but I'm like, how does Harry keep from fucking everybody else's stuff up? Well, I would, but I I would the, think uh, in part is that Harry's apartment is a safe space for him, he doesn't have his high running emotions, which is what? a lot of the time tends to make like he you know he can go into a hospital room if he really has to but he tends to stay away from you know wards that have people on life support or babies and things because at the end of the day he can't control it uh but that being said you know even when he's around you know uh, you'll see as the books go on you know someone might have a radio or something like that and when tensions are running high you know like Harry will start like busting out those radios and walkie talkies and whatever because they just can't stand to be around him in his home even if he's doing magic in the basement I think that'd be a little bit farther removed but generally speaking this is a safe space for him that doesn't see a lot of high emotions maybe I guess but yeah it's just the fact that it it also could be that okay that or I mean like he drives a blue beetle I mean even that has to run off an alternator and and electricity True. This well, it could be just an, an old Pre- enough world, system. Pre World War One, like that Pre- could world just be a really, system really that, old house yeah. that it doesn't matter. It's just not I mean, up to yeah. code, and it well, never yeah. will be as long <laughs> as Harry's actually, a tenant. Actually, <laughs> you, were, you were asking about some of that. Some of the, yeah, There's depleted the uranium in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> uranium. <laughs> uranium. <laughs> yeah, you're some of the houses in in, uh, in Chicago. Chicago has one of the hu- uh, largest collection of uh victorian homes yeah and a lot of the victorian homes are bare wire oh dang uh, they are bare <laughs> wire on uh, isolators okay um Fun so times. they are almost, <laughs> that's why they have a lot of fires <laughs> no they're almost bulletproof because they don't requ- require like a uh, romax they have bare wires i mean it's not isolated or insulated, insulated. um but it's it's worked for years Kind of thing, and it just it maybe broke, just maybe it. well, it just maybe that he, you know he blew the fuses in his house. Well, yeah, his I know he's, he says he's just his off. Yeah, he's like he but doesn't it might just not, might but not affect all the all the other people yeah. because it's not wired directly to him. I still just find it interesting that they might have completely separate like water heaters and things like that too. That like Harry because Harry he says he goes without hot water, but obviously the rest of it. So I'm just like how. But anyways, that was more. Yeah, but he, yeah. Might, he also <clears throat> might have and. Um, Again, this is something they do in some of the rooming houses is they have their own little mini uh, water heaters. And, and they might, right? Yeah. yeah. So like that everybody else Because has their own this thing is a boarding house own, and has sort of been made yeah. this way, they might sort of have yeah. developed it in that fashion. Yeah. But I mean, like the old Victorian but, homes, the whole idea of having a sub basement, though, like, I mean, I, <laughs> I actually used to live in a little Victorian rooming house <laughs> and it does have a sub basement. Yes, Jay so is has, that old. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's <laughs> not the point he was making. <laughs> not quite as old as Jack. <laughs> but I do remember the wheel. He's been inducted into the White Council. It wasn't new at the time when he lived in it. Let's do <laughs> No, <laughs> Betty White is it, older it than sliced bread. It was really interesting. It, no. actually had, it actually had um, servant stairs. It was oh. so old that they actually had back stairs back from the stairs. servants. So it's Upstairs, like, downstairs. Yeah. Um, sure. Is to say wool carpets and wool socks do not match. And still alive as of the taping of <laughs> this <laughs> episode. Of nails, <laughs> down as fast as you wouldn't believe. Anyway. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, Bob it, and potions. Anyone and else has anything to uh, add to chapter eight? I think. I think that about wraps it up for me. Do you have any last questions on? Oh, I got tons of questions, but nothing occurring occurring to my mind right now. But uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I thought this was fun. Well, great. Oh, yes. Thank you for joining us. This in- concludes our episode number five. 
You can find us online at freeflowrambling.com and mcanalys.ca. There we have links to our other podcasts, social media, and other fun tidbits. Please subscribe if you like what you're hearing. And please consider supporting us through Patreon to keep the magic alive and to see more content. We are Free Flow Rambling, and thank you for listening. 